Police Department Rainbow Incident Information Line. This line has been established to provide you with information about management of the incident. Attendance continues to grow at the Rainbow Family Gathering. 20,000 people are expected by the peak of the event on July 4th. Safety concerns include lack of drinking water on site and extreme fire danger conditions. Forced roads in the vicinity of the gathering are narrow and winding with washboard surfaces. A national incident management team has been assigned to deal with the effects of the gathering. Please have a safe summer. Working together, we can make a difference. Hey, we're not here for a long time. isn't that one of us or another of us is coming up with this idea of gathering. It's that this is a natural human reaction to do this. And they come up here because they hear this is a world peace event. And they find here all these different kinds of people, because we are as different as people get. All these different kinds of people up here, working together, playing together, celebrating together, praying together, and in all different ways. I feel a lot of love here. Um, Regardless of the color of my skin, that kind of concerned me um, at first was what other, other people were going to be here and I've just seen just all different walks of life. It's a society where the labor is motivated by something other than money and that is the most revolutionary thing going on here. It's a society that is way, way tolerant of slightly weirder behavior and as a result has a way, way, way lower violent crime rate than a comparative city of, or village of this size. And it's educational for, for people who come to see how the camp makes these little self-replicating models that we call kitchens or neighborhoods. And each one has its waste disposals. Each one has its cooking area, its food preparation area, its washing area. Each one has its kid play area. Each one has its warming fire pit. Each one has its uh, individual humans who make up its population full of different ideas and interests. Well, this is the official, unofficial rainbow, how it works, uh, the key, the anarchy about how this happens every year. Another thing goes like this. How does it work? Well, take what you need, give what you can, where you can, when you can, however you can. In other words, lend a hand. And what happens then around, up and down these paths? Strangers become friends, friends become family, family becomes community, and community on the move. That's the movement we're talking about. So uh, these gatherings are occurring, and I class myself in the early category because I got on the idea early. And I think uh, two or three generations mm -hmm. from now, anybody who came to any of the gatherings in the, the, the 20th century, the 19 something or others, the 1972s nine, to the 1999s, I think that this whole era of the gatherings is going to be considered sort of like the first page in a big book. Funny, you know, we talked about that permit thing, and I know we'll get there in a minute, but the um, Forest Service has a non-commercial large group use permit. Uh, the permit is free um, so that it doesn't discriminate against anyone with no money. Uh, the permit is designed to let the land manager, generally the district ranger, have some influence over time, place, and manner of a large group gathering. 
time, for instance, if they wanted to meet in May, um, May might be um, when the grizzlies are coming out or elk calving season. Uh, interaction with other forest management things like we had to move cows this year. Um, there was a timber sale impacted last year. And manor basically speaks to the health and safety issues. Manor being where's the water coming from? How are you providing for hygiene facilities, toilets, washing? Um, those kinds of things are, are elements in the manor section. So that's what the permit does. Does the Rainbow family get this permit? No, they don't. And there's a reason for that. The Rainbows feel that they have a First Amendment right to gather on, on public lands, national forest lands. The Supreme Court has said, yes, Rainbows and other groups, you do have a First Amendment right to gather, but the agency, in this case the Forest Service, also has a right to regulate in particular in relation to these gatherings, they have attempted uh, over the last dozen and a half years to uh, create restrictive regulations that have tried to put uh, levels of control upon these gatherings that are a clear intrusion into the uh, rights of people to assemble. Uh, and there are three sets or four sets of regulations that have been drafted through the Agriculture Department. Two of them fell in court in constitutional cases against us. Uh, one in 1986 that concerned the rights of 10 or more persons to assemble. One in 1988 that concerned the rights of 25 or more persons to assemble. One in about 1990 that never got out of the halls of uh, D.C. that got canned by the Justice Department because they just didn't want to go on defending bad law and getting beat by us who looked like hippies, though they, they understood way early on that we had uh, you know, a certain degree of, of intelligence, coordination, communication, uh, attributes that uh, sophisticated societies possess. So uh, they've come at us now with a new regulation, CFR 251, in the, uh, uh, in the guise of a carefully drawn uh, right of assembly regulation. They have created a bizarre chain of, of hoops, hurdles, puddles, steeplechases, and, uh, and loop-de-loos that, that any group of 75 or more persons uh, assembling would have to meet. However, what the government has done here is created this contraption of a regulation with enormous pitfalls that would bedevil the right of people to assemble in, in peace and to create of a peacefully assembly large groups an endless string of criminally liable events. Well, we're fighting that in court under the same regulations that fell in the famous case of Martin Luther King's group and Reverend Shuttlesworth's group wishing to march through the streets of Birmingham and having to meet this bizarre uh, complication of regulation pro process that they could never be granted, that they could never meet with uh, liability issues and uh, uh, additional uh, stipulation issues where you get the permit and then because you've got the permit they can or cannot add other things you must do after you've signed it. This is bizarre in American contract law and yet it's in the permit structure the Forest Service has created. Any person here could be deemed liable for the action of any other person here under this bizarre uh, uh, regulation. This is a tremendous complication of a very straightforward right of Americans uh, to assemble. And in the last couple months, we've received some very favorable decisions upholding the constitutionality of the regulations and, and the permit. Is it going to be a situation where you're going to go everywhere in this entire gathering with what? Vehicles, uh, horses, uh, 
know. Bicycles. I don't know how I'm going to deal with it until I have a chance, Barry, to, to, to talk with him. But am I going to come in here and, and cause a big problem and a big ruckus and all of that stuff? No. You know I'm not going to do that. Am I going to come in here beating heads and beat every head till I find them? No. You know that. I'm not going to do that. I've told you in getting a warrant rather than just finding them and citing them. Well, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, mean I said it. I said if they will come forward. No, but what I'm saying is if they don't come forward, what's well, the advantage of getting a warrant? If once you find them, we, with or without a warrant, you can either arrest them Absolutely. or cite them. Absolutely. So if you're not going to do all of these other activities that you're claiming not to do, what is the advantage of obtaining a warrant? Well, what I said, Brian, is I'm going to talk to the assistant U.S. attorney, and I'm going to see what he recommends on how to handle this. I'm sorry, the question I asked you was, what is the advantage of getting a warrant rather than issuing a citation once you find them? No, I don't know yet until I have a chance to talk with him. Uh, there may be an advantage and there may not be. I don't know. Why are you considering a warrant? There's always options. I always have options. And, and I think the rainbows really need to wake up. Um, the federal courts are saying, Rain does. You need to get a non-commercial group use permit, and you need to comply and work with the Forest Service. But yet they have not come forward to work with us on, on this particular issue. Now there's still time for them to do that, and I'm hoping that they will. I did not think that we would be out here in the forests defending the rights of all American citizens to assemble in peace. I really believe we were out here on a, uh, on a much, in a way, plainer spiritual mission to come out into the woods and sit down together and meditate or pray or, or contemplate together, and that that was the, the, the key thing for us. I still believe that's what draws people to these gatherings. But en route, as we've been going, out of the sky, as it were, this rainbow-colored mantle of defending the rights of all persons to assemble has fallen on our shoulders. Shaman woman, where are you? I want it stated that I'm taking Shaman this ticket woman. under duress. I do not want this ticket. I never agreed to it. You have decided you wanted me, and I would like to know why. Yeah, I'm not going to get into it. It'll, it'll be brought out in court. So, uh, All right. Just, you already have uh, my. My feeling is, Joni, is that uh, is that you were very involved in the uh, in this whole organization process of setting this up. You were here when there were more than 75 uh, uh, people, and, and I'm going to issue you a citation. Yeah. This is a peace and healing gathering, and you know a lot of this goes on. You know in your heart that what's happening down in there is a completely unique thing. This is a world where kids are shooting each other in their schoolrooms. This is a world where women are getting their, their necks slashed and being raped and beaten up. It's a very sick world out there. And you've got one thing happening, the biggest event that happens anywhere in this country, and probably the whole world, where people are trying to bring that humanity back again out of negative and violence into positive and love. And that's what this gathering is. And the harassment that, and the things we have to deal with, the cops on the road and all this, makes more work for us than to go in there and to pull off a really beautiful event. Joni, and if, you, I, if you were to get a permit and you were to follow that process, I don't think you would have the problems that you have now. That's, that's what you're saying. We follow, that's what you're, you're saying, that until we get a permit, the cops are on the road, and we're going to have everybody, well, the, the police dogs and all the harassment, Joni, and if we got is, a permit, that wouldn't happen. Joni, it, right now it's I'm not unlawful. negotiating anything. I'm no. just clearing and clarifying. Joni, this is an unlawful gathering. We, we have no one that, uh, no one apparently that's in charge, although we do know that, that there are people obviously involved in the organization of this thing. People that there are volunteers. Okay. Bill, we are a tribe of volunteers. Okay. The next gathering somewhere, you're going to have 150, 200 people. You're going to have a core group of people that had something and felt a calling like I did for this one and came early and said, yes, I want to be beautiful here and I'm going to work on this one. Now, this is one of the other the other problems that, that we have with the rainbows is that they, they say there's no leaders. Get on the web page and take a look and see if that's put together by, by a group of people that have no leadership. Take a look at that. Make your own decision. Um, how, many, how many groups do you know that can come together, 25,000 people, that can feed at least two-thirds of those people, because they will, that can set up a watering system without having any kind of an organization. How do these people find out about this? 
I guarantee you, you get on the web page and you'll see a hotline number that people can call all over the country. They're 1-800 numbers, most of them are. People can call and they find out where the gathering is. They will put out on the internet, just, just like they did for the Spring Council here, explicit directions on where the national gathering is going to occur. Now, now think about this for just a minute. Is 25,000 people coming together? Are they unorganized or what? I mean, this is a problem I've got with the rainbows, and I think they ought to be honest, upfront, and fair with people that it is an organized event. You know, I really take exception to that, that you don't have leaders and that you're not organized. I don't think you're being honest. Well, who's my leader? amazing uh, how Garrick, Stephen, and I were taken as a leadership position last year. They put us in this and gave us tickets and said, you are the leaders, you go to court. And we've been taken out of the gathering and were put over here. But there's a huge gathering going on over here about a mile and a half away. And we put nothing, no effort into this whatsoever. We just came to be here in exile. And so obviously it's a, it's a spontaneous event that people just come and put their energy in. a sent maximum sentence of six months in jail and five thousand dollars and he gave us three months in jail and five hundred dollars plus the ten dollar assess fee which is something they do in pennsylvania the uh the the fact is that this if it sent a message it sent a message that the regulation is unfair it's inflexible it's harsh it's not a good remedy for the solutions that the government is seeking in working with large groups of people Even though I'm cooperating completely with this and I appreciate this, I'm doing everything I can to make this work, I still think the permit system as it's written is a loss of liberties for the American people. And we're just going to move along, cooperating with it right now until we can figure out a way to uh, see a change in other matters. In the meantime, we're going to cooperate with it and make it work. Talk to you how to came out. Good luck yeah. on, uh, on, on making this all work this year. I, I think you have a good chance. Thank you. Good. Okay, I'm going to sign in here, correct? Yes. Yep, that's the holder. And the holder. That's here. Individuals. I got you before I got in. Assembly. <laughs> and if I can say something to our kind camera person, uh, for all this complexity here, we're trying to establish a process that can work in the future uh, and get these different traditions down so that the operating plan and its parts can change and grow and form and reform as uh, events really, really need for both the Forest Service's uh, needs and the gatherings needs. I think we're really on a track here. It looks like a lot of paperwork, but if it saves terrible aggravation and uh, criminality, I think it's really worth it.
they they say that this is the home of the brave and the land of the th free, but you have to be pretty darn brave to be free. That's what I think. <laughs>